Join the Thinking in English Conversation Club right now. For just two dollars a week, you can join with other English learners, practice speaking, have conversations, enjoy yourself, and use new vocabulary. We run conversation clubs every Tuesday and Thursday at 12 p.m., 6 p.m., and 9 p.m. UK time. So there's no excuse. You can join, and you should join right now. Join the Thinking in English Conversation Club. Link in the description. Hello, I'm Tom Wilkinson, and welcome to the Thinking in English podcast, a podcast for intermediate to advanced level English learners. In today's episode, I want to talk about green washing. Let's discuss the definition, some examples of green washing, what the consequences are, and how to identify it. You can find the full transcript for free over on the Thinking in English blog. The link is in the description. Check out my Instagram page and my YouTube channel, both called Thinking in English. Leave a like, rating, or review wherever you are listening right now. Join my conversation club on Patreon, and here is today's vocabulary list. As always, the written list is available in the description of the podcast and also on my blog, thinkinginenglish.blog. Sustainable. Sustainable. Causing or made in a way that causes little or no damage to the environment, and therefore able to continue for a long time. As in, the website encourages sustainable fashion through swapping. Environmentally friendly, environmentally friendly, not harmful to the environment or trying to help the environment. For instance. We will use environmentally friendly energy sources. Marketing, marketing, a job that involves encouraging people to buy a product or service, as in, he would like a career in marketing. To mislead, to mislead, to cause someone to believe something that is not true, as in, he has admitted. Misleading the police. Conscious, conscious. As a suffix, it is used after nouns and adverbs to mean knowing about and worried about a particular thing, or thinking that something is important. For example, we appeal to health-conscious consumers. Biodegradable, biodegradable. Able to decay naturally and in a way that is not harmful. For example, biodegradable packaging helps to limit the amount of harmful chemicals released into the environment. Certification, certification, the act of providing an official document as proof that something has happened or been done, as in. Fair trade is a certification that guarantees producers in the developing world are paid a fair price for their crops. Consumer, consumer, a person who buys goods or services for their own use, as in the new rates will affect all consumers, including businesses. In our modern world, issues like environmental sustainability, climate change, and global warming. Are constant and ever present. In order to protect the environment into the future, and preserve what we have today, pressure is growing on governments, countries, companies, and individuals to be greener. People want to be more environmentally friendly. They want to buy more sustainable products and use more sustainable services. There are many consumers who will choose a more sustainable product. If it is competing against a less sustainable product, and some people will even pay more money to be greener, companies therefore have a reason to become green and sell green products. There are customers who want to buy more environmentally friendly products, and who expect the companies to offer these things. For companies, 
The answer is simple. Make more sustainable products to attract more customers and prove they are a green company. Right? Well, no, not always. And this is why we need to talk about green washing. Green washing, according to the dictionary definition, is the act of providing the public or investors with misleading or outright false information about the environmental impact of a company's products and operations. In other words, rather than actually make their products more sustainable, a company could pretend they are more sustainable. They could make their products look or appear more environmentally friendly by using misleading information, claims with no evidence or marketing tricks. People want natural products. We want healthy snacks and food. We want our clothes to be free from chemicals. We want our plastics to be recyclable. And we want everything we buy to use fewer natural resources. The problem is that for companies, this can be expensive and inconvenient. Greenwashing can be used to cover up less sustainable parts of a company or business. Customers and investors want to spend their money on environmentally sound businesses and greenwashing is a way for companies to attract these people without making major changes to their business plans. Of course, some companies are green companies. They do make an effort to be as environmentally friendly as possible. And they can prove this with evidence and facts. But when companies spend more money and more time on advertising, instead of actually becoming more sustainable, this is known as greenwashing. Sometimes greenwashing may be unintentional, but often it is purposefully designed and carried out by marketing and PR teams. One of the most famous recent examples of greenwashing comes from the car company Volkswagen. They used a special device in their cars which would reduce emissions during car testing, but not in real driving conditions. They then used this information to promote the low emission cars. Even though this was a lie, they were not low emission. Tyson, a meat company in America, lied about using drug-free animals, even though they marketed this. Coca-Cola was criticised for marketing natural sugars. Yes, sugar is, might be natural, but it is still sugar and it's not healthy. And the oil company BP made a big campaign based on putting solar panels on their buildings. But they were still selling fossil fuels. So greenwashing is an important term, but where did it come from? Well, greenwashing is connected to the emergence of environmental awareness in the 20th century. In the 1960s and 70s, a growing number of people became concerned about the impact humans were having on the environment and the world. The first Earth Day was held in 1970, And books like Silent Spring by Rachel Carson, which looked at the impact of pesticides on the environment, helped to raise awareness. As public concern for the environment grew, companies began to see the potential for marketing their products as environmentally friendly. Companies started to use terms like eco-friendly or green without any scientific or factual evidence. The term greenwashing has an interesting origin. In 1986, the environmentalist Jay Westerveld wrote an essay criticising the hotel industry. Hotels had been encouraging guests to reuse towels, and they had been doing so by claiming it was more environmentally friendly. Right? Reuse your towel and save the environment. The truth, however, is that it was a cost-cutting decision not an environmental one. Hotels would push the idea of being environmentally friendly, but at the same time, they wouldn't recycle, 
they would use inefficient heating and lighting, they just wanted to save money. The term green washing quickly became adopted to refer to all instances of companies promoting misleading environmental claims, and more and more companies have been engaging in such practices over the year. But what are the consequences of greenwashing? Well, one of the primary consequences is that it misleads consumers into thinking they are making environmentally conscious decisions, when in fact they are not. For example, a company may claim their product is made from recycled materials, when in reality only a small amount of the product contains recycled materials. By making false claims, companies can sell products that are not environmentally friendly at a higher price. Greenwashing can also create a cycle of misinformation and harm the environment. A company may promote its product as being biodegradable or compostable, but if the product is not properly disposed of, it can harm the environment. Consumers who are misled into thinking that the product is safe for the environment may not dispose of it properly, leading to additional harm. A company in Australia, for instance, marketed their plastic bags as biodegradable when they actually could only be degraded in a specialist machine. Greenwashing is not just harmful to consumers. It can also have significant consequences for the environment. The false claims made by companies engaging in greenwashing can lead to the continued use of environmentally harmful practices, ultimately causing more damage to the environment. A company may claim that their product is made from sustainable materials, but if the materials are not truly renewable, or if they are not sourced in an environmentally responsible way, they can still harm the environment. Greenwashing can also lead to the continuation of wasteful production practices. Companies may claim to be environmentally friendly, but not making the changes to reduce their waste. And greenwashing can contribute to a lack of action from companies to make real and meaningful changes. Instead of investing in sustainable initiatives, such as using renewable energy, companies might just continue being wasteful. Greenwashing can have a negative impact on consumers. When a company makes false or misleading claims, it undermines the trust that we have in a company. And this can lead to long-term consequences, as consumers maybe are less likely to purchase products or support that business in the future. And it can create a loss of trust in companies by creating confusion about what truly environmentally friendly means. When a company makes false claims, it can be difficult for consumers to know what is truly sustainable. Greenwashing can also contribute to general cynicism about sustainability. If consumers become aware that companies are making false claims, they may become sceptical of all sustainability claims made by companies. So how can you spot greenwashing? To avoid being misled by greenwashing, it is important to be aware of the common tactics used by companies to make false or misleading claims about their environmental impact. Some of the most common tactics include vagueness, so vague or undefined terms such as eco-friendly or sustainable are often used by companies without providing any specific information about what makes their product environmentally friendly. Half-truths. A half-truth is a claim that is technically true but misleading. For example, a company may claim that their product is made from recycled materials but the recycled content may be so small that it has little impact on the environment. Irrelevant claims. A company may make a claim that is not directly related to its environmental impact. A company may claim that their product is biodegradable, for example, but the biodegradable materials may not be compostable 
and they may still harm the environment. False labels. Uh, Some companies and some labels will describe their product as organic or carbon neutral, which makes it seem more environmentally friendly, but doesn't actually mean anything. Or greenwashing symbols. Some symbols and images that are associated with environmentalism, such as leaves or the recycling symbol, can be used to make products appear more environmentally friendly. So, to avoid being misled by greenwashing, it is important to be able to identify it when you see it. Before making a purchase, research the company and their environmental claims. Check if the company has a sustainability report or any other information about their environmental impact. You could also look for certification or labelling that verifies a product's environmental impact. Look for evidence, something like a fair trade symbol or the Rainforest Alliance symbol, which provides assurance that that product has been checked by an independent organisation. Read the fine print on products and labels and packaging. This can help you identify vague or undefined terms, such as eco-friendly or sustainable. And if you're unsure about a company's environmental claims, ask them. You can contact the company or check their website or check reviews. Consider the context in which the product is being sold or the company is making the claim. A product that is marketed as environmentally friendly may not be as sustainable as it claims if that company has a history of lying, of environmental violations or poor practices. Right, like oil companies. If an oil company is talking about solar panels, well, they're also selling you oil. And if a claim seems too good to be true, it probably is. Trust your instincts and be sceptical of exaggerated or false claims about a product's environmental impact. The problem of greenwashing is not one that individuals can tackle on their own. To truly combat greenwashing, organisations and institutions must also play a role. Organisations should be able to enforce standards and punish companies found greenwashing, educate customers and support sustainable practices and products. So here is today's final thought. Greenwashing is an important topic that everyone should be able to understand and recognise. In our modern world, companies are trying to sell products to environmentally conscious consumers and often engage in greenwashing as a tactic. Hopefully, after listening to this episode, you can now understand the concept of greenwashing, identify it, and avoid falling for it. Can you think of any other examples of greenwashing that maybe you've seen in the past? Let us know by leaving a comment on Spotify, a comment on the Thinking in English blog on the transcript, or reaching out to me on Instagram. I love to hear from all of you all of the time. It's awesome. If you like listening to Thinking in English, uh, please consider supporting us. Join my Patreon, uh, you can get bonus episodes, you join the Conversation Club, which is absolutely amazing. Our Conversation Clubs are, you know, I see people getting better every time they join. And the more of you who join, the more Conversation Clubs we can do in the future. Uh, There's also English classes, Uh, we have classes every Wednesday, and maybe we'll do a few more days in the future. Um, So if you want to take some group classes, they're really cool as well. Um, And yeah, just support me on Patreon. You can also buy me a coffee. So if you don't want to, you know, join the conversation club, you don't really care about the bonus episodes, but you just think, ah, Tom's a nice guy. Well, please buy me a coffee. Uh, I drink a lot of coffee and it can be, uh, I work at home. So every time someone donates me $5, I've got a link in the description. Every time someone donates me $5, I go and buy myself a coffee at the local cafe. So if you want to buy me a coffee or buy me two coffees, please click the link in the description. And what else? Leave me a like, a rating, a review, wherever you are listening right now. Well, I think hopefully 
by the time this is released or a few days after this episode is released, we'll be at 5,000 Spotify ratings, which would be amazing. 5,000 people have rated me five stars on Spotify, hopefully, by the time this is released. So if I'm not at five, please go and rate me anyway. And go and rate me anyway. Let's try and get to six. Let's try and get to 10,000 ratings. Uh, Leave me an Apple review as well. Um, Yeah, I think that's everything. Join the Conversation Club, listen to bonus episodes, click all the links in the description, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.